Hey YouTube, here we go, another video. <laughs> um, uh, this is my, this is my KE100, the one I converted over to the electronic ignition. And uh, we're gonna, this is a 1991. And um, we're gonna take a step back in time. We're gonna take a step back in time to 1971. Before I was even born, this one right here was on the road, this power plant. This power plant right here is uh, I think it's a G1 actually. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's the G1 or the G2. Um, but this is a 10 speed. Yep, you heard me right. Basically, same engine. I mean, there's a few different features on it. Like the air filter box can be bolted onto it. Um, the carburetor is in the same spot, same intake. This is a 100. CC, and you might notice that big shaft right there. And on the side cover, which I do not have with me, it's actually in my shed, um, in a tote buried under like four other totes, or outside, would have dug it out and showed you. There's a box that goes on the side here, it looks like a bubble on the side cover, and um, that actually has the high and low range. So the gearbox inside. It's the same one as your KE100, KD80s, KM100s. Just that instead of having a, um, the shaft is elongated, so it comes all the way through. The gear is on a, uh, slides on the shaft, and the ratio is changed in that box from high to low. Um, it is not faster than your KE100. In fact, the high side is the same size side as that. It just has low low gears for climbing and uh, doing that sort of thing. Um, hell of a go-kart motor if that's what you were going to use it for. So, anyway, um, it's a pretty neat piece of history. Um, it's a 15-tooth sprocket. Same thing that um, the KE100s have for a final drive. You know, same as a 15. It just has a big giant hole in the center of it and it slides over the shaft because it's got that funky thing. The downside to this is when that sprocket wears out, you better hope and hope to God you can find one. Um, kind of a shitty design. It should have been, it should have been replaceable. To be honest with you, but there again, it's only a 100. It's not like it's a 125 where people are going to spend buku bucks on it. Um, this motor right here had a um, a seal leak and burnt up the piston. I mean, it's just it's just toasted. Also, too, this motor has a smaller wrist pin diameter than the uh, KE100, and they are not interchangeable. So you're probably wondering why I have this old iron sides next to my Kawasaki KE100. Because this engine possesses something that is going to help with the efficiency of this engine. Now you probably think it's like, well, that thing definitely has points. This thing definitely has been upgraded to electronic ignition. What the hell could that possibly have on it that is going to help with this engine? Well, I'm gonna show you. These engines have a desirable part. It's a 1971 10 speed that um, I really don't care about. So. But it has one part that we have, and we are going to rip this cylinder head off. Oh, I already took the bolts out. The combustion chamber. Look at that chamber. That is a high compression chamber. That combustion chamber on that cylinder head. I'm going to rip mine off. Let's see if I can uh, get mine off. I already took the bolts out of it for you. Let's see if I can get that out. I'm not supposed to pull it out this side, but okay. And here you'll see a low compression head. Now, I'm going to show you the difference. See this piece right here? That's your combustion chamber. See how it divots in for the spark plug? Look how big that one is. That would be the combustion chamber on this spark plug. Pretty uh, different size, huh? Also, looks like I'm getting some carbon buildup on the exhaust side. Let's check that out. Other than that, same head. It'll bolt right on. I have one head twisted, so 
you can, uh, yeah. That's how they're going to go on, just like that. It's going to require the same head gasket, same bolting torque, everything's going to be the same. So I just figured I'd show you what, is, what the difference is. The combustion chamber. This is a high compression head. This is a low compression head. Um, basically, the high compression is going to give you more efficiency. The low compression head is going to have less compression and going to provide less torque for the motor. Let's see if I can zero in on the combustion chambers. Boom. Bang. And that is what's going to be, um, what do you call it there? That's going to help with the efficiency, the compression. It's going to help with uh, power on the low end. Now, that reason why I wanted to go with that cylinder head is because I don't want to feel the effects from changing to that gear. So I'm going to have more power between that ignit that between that head and the ignition system I just put in this bike this bike is going to be pretty badass so that's my plans it's the same bore and stroke everything's the same same carburetor setup basically everything is literally I mean literally the same so we are going to put that new head onto this motor and this is going to give us more compression and power. So, I hopefully, um, hopefully, this um, will inspire you to uh, step on the wild side. These things are here. I, I love these bikes because you could do so much with them, and they're only a 100cc. And you can get factory stuff. I don't know if you notice, everything I'm using is from factory models either earlier or later so it, you really just have to know these bikes in and out and I've dealt with so many of them I knew about the compression on the head I knew it would give me more torque I've driven them I've driven a bike with 10 speed the fact that it's a pain in the ass is one thing but other than that it was actually a pretty decent bike I mean you can just ride it and hide and uh, when you ride it in high gears, it performs just like a KE100. When you put it in low gears, it's like shifting a Mack truck. You're going nowhere and you're going through gears. Kind of pointless, but whatever. That's why they stopped producing it. Because why have that? When you, I mean, they have, do have a little bit of a, a different gear ratio in there, but not much. Um, it's definitely not as fast as these newer KE100s. Especially when you combine an electronic ignition with a high compression head. I am gonna have to most likely adjust the carburetor on this a little bit because it's gonna be burning differently and we don't wanna burn a hole in the piston. So, um, what do you call it there? And basically for that, I'm just gonna adjust it but with the engine you know, warmed up and idling and um, I'll, I'll leave the side cover off, take it around the yard a couple of times and tweak the, um, the main jet that goes into the center of the carburetor and now I will change that. But other than that, everything else is the same. So hopefully this video helps you. This is an early 10 speed. Um, it's a, K, uh, it's a um, Kawasaki 100. It, um, KE 100. I don't think it's a KE 100. I think it's just a Kawasaki 100. Um, but anyway, it's basically the same power plant. There's a few different features. This one has a dipstick um, in it. I'll show you. This is this will not work on your bike. Oh, it's got a dipstick for checking your oil where ours has the plug on the side. I'll show you. It's got a little different design to it. The, instead of having the rubber boot, this one has a rubber boot with a chrome ring around it and it's held on with four screws. But same top. The uh, clutch adjustment, uh, this is, I just do this on there, but it, it goes in the same direction. The uh, clutch adjustment goes in the same, adjuster I should say, goes in the same way the other one does. You know, it's just like that. Like that. It's got an oiler. I'm in the way here, hold on. Got an oiler. And the oil tube runs out 
is external as opposed to ours being internal. So it runs out and over and then back down into the uh, into the banjo fitting right there. So other than that, it's the same motor with a few different odds and ends to it. And it's got a different exhaust um, port than ours. This one bolts in the center with um, springs where ours is bolted. You can see it not. Probably not. But ours is bolted. So anyway, that's um that's pretty much it. So when you get these when you get these um heads off, there's gonna be a question you're gonna come up with. Um okay, my KE one hundred has a washer belt into the head uh, head bolt, uh, head nut, and the one that comes with the um that one has a regular style nut, a washer and a lock washer. Here we go. A washer and a lock washer. Which ones do I use? You're gonna stay with your factory one with the um what with the flat washer on it. The head bosses are the same. Right there. Same amount of coolant thins. Actually, the uh, this one has more. The new one has more, but these ones have the ones that go around the around the plug. This one does too, but they just stand alone. So basically, it's the same same head. A little wider, but the same head, and it's got the cutout for the exhaust. It does fit right on there. So, and you're going to use the same spark plug. You're going to use the spark plug for the KE100, um, your year making model. Don't leave the you know don't go with the one that was in this motor go with the one that was in this motor it's all set up for that and um, that's pretty much it so I'm gonna bolt that on there and um, I'm gonna end up with a, uh, a high compression KE100 with more horsepower and torque and uh, better fuel efficient because I got the electronic ignition the high compression head and this is the factory bore so it's, it's basically like a sleeper you know it's going to give me more speed, more horsepower. And with that gear on the back there, I'm going to have more uh, top end. Low end, top end. So, this is going to be great. Anyway, um, i got a few things. I brought the bike into the house. As you know, I did the uh, shocks. As you know, I did the shocks. I got them right there. i got to put them on, swap them out, because my shocks are leaking. So, the video suggestion. Thank you. So... Those are all rebuilt, all filled, all ready to go on. And I gotta pull that off, do my rear sprocket. Um, that's all basic stuff, you know. I mean, I don't need to do a video on that. Basically, just your axle bolt, and the bolt here, and the bolt there, and then it slides right out. So, but um, that's basically um, what I'm doing today. Today's project on my KE100. I'm gonna call this the KE100 buildup. <laughs> Um, it's basically just getting this thing back to where I want it and uh, performance wise I can't wait to see what this thing's gonna do. It's gonna be crazy So um, my goal for this bike is 70 miles an hour. That's my goal Not that you want to do 70 miles an hour on a KE100, but it'd be pretty damn cool to get something like that I'll probably go with 65 the factory speed it tops out at 62 and a half miles an hour is the top speed on this bike 62 and a half I'm going to go for 65, 65, 66 miles an hour, um, just because I don't drive it that fast, but it'd be pretty funny, you know, I mean, just, just be really cool to be able to have that, um, so it's definitely, and, and I keep stressing this, this is not a bike for jumping, this is not a sport bike, this is not a stunt bike, this is an on-off-road enduro, uh, basically it's designed to, uh, for beginners, it's designed to get out there and um, get on the road, go back and forth to work, go to the convenience store, and then you see that dirt road, you will see where it goes. Take it down by the lake, take it up by the pond. Um, if you're up at camp, it's a great, great, great camp bike. Um, absolutely great camp bike. So, um, by all means, you know, that this bike is not for doing jumps and, and wheelies and you know, like, oh, you can't do a wheelie on that. Well, you can do a wheelie if you stand on the back pegs and, and uh, goose it first. You'll get the front wheel up off the ground if you did that. 
Um, but if you're sitting on the bike where you're supposed to be and you get your hand, your foot on the pegs, it's not going to do a wheelie. And I'm going to tell you something else. Even though I changed that gear ratio and I put the high compression head on there, it's still not going to have enough torque to get the front wheel up off the ground. Um, it's not the first time me using one of those heads on there. I do know the benefits of it. And um, it's not my first time with that high compression head. But I do love that, that style head. And it does work excellent delivering a little bit more power on this bike so once again this is a 71 1971 10 speed um, I believe it's a G1 uh, let's see if we find any information on it oh crap it's a G4 I was way off right there here let me see if I can clean that up a little bit more I did not expect that G4 so it was earlier than that there we go. Right. I don't know if you can see it or not. Right there. So it's a G4. Alright, good. Glad I did that. So now you get the actual thing. Uh, this is a G4 bike. Um, motor. 10 speed. I know it's a 71 because the bike it came off of. Um, and they were matching numbers. So. so it's a 1971 G4 motor. And that's the one that has the high compression head. So, um, hopefully, hopefully you can uh, find one of them on eBay or someplace or even at the scrapyard. If you know any motorcycle junkyards and you're looking for, it's come off a dinosaur bike. Um, these bikes have a tendency to go by the color of them. So the color of the bike was the uh, burgundy color. Um, burgundy tank, metal tank, teardrop style. Um, and it had the metal fender in the back with the big round um, brake light. So that was the um, the bike that it came off of. Unfortunately, I don't have no videos or pictures of it. Um, it is cut up, laying in my yard, dead. Um, just because I'm going to make an engine stand out of it. And the bike was junk. So, and when I say junk, it was it was picked through. It was missing everything. It was missing the carburetor. It was missing all kinds of stuff. Um, it was a freebie. So I, I grabbed it and walked away. And hey, thanks. So anyway, that's what I'm doing today. I'm shocks gear head uh, not necessarily in that order so well hopefully you find this video informative and as always please subscribe have any questions or comments by all means send them my way i love them thanks peace out